All right, so we're going to talk about a concept in um, quantitative science classes like chemistry and physics um, called significant figures. And a lot of times you'll hear them referenced as sig figs for short. So what exactly is a sig fig or significant figure? It's all digits that you know for certain in a measurement plus one estimate. So like for example, if we're looking at um, the top ruler, we definitely know that we are beyond 2, and then here's the 0.5 mark. So we know for sure we're at 2.5, and then we estimate that very last digit to be about halfway, so 0.5. So there's our certain, and then there is our estimate, okay? So that would have three significant figures because you have all that are uh, certain plus one estimate. Now down here at B, on ruler B, you see that you know that you're between two and three, but since there's no more little dash marks, it's not quite as certain exactly what that second number is, so we're just going to guesstimate it's around 0.5. So we know for sure the two, and then the estimate is the 0.5. So in this case, we know two significant figures. Okay? So, like, for example, if I did some calculation, like maybe converting um, this, this measurement, maybe say it's in inches and I'm going to convert it to centimeters, then my answer will have three sig figs because that's what my original had. And down here, my answer could only have two because that's what my original had. What does that even mean? Who cares, right? Why are they important? Well... In chemistry, when we're given um, measurement quantities with a certain number of sig figs, and then we perform calculations with them, our answer can only be as certain as our beginning measurements were. So if I started with two sig figs, I have to end with two sig figs. So we're going to take this general rule down here that is we're going to always round our answer to the lowest number of significant figures that were given to us in the original problem. So, okay, so um, there are two ways to look at how to count sig figs. Um, I'm gonna show you both. So the traditional way is basically this list of rules. So um, any non-zero number is significant. So in this case, I've got one, two, three, four, none of them are zeros, so that's four sig figs, okay? So they're all significant. Um, our next rule is that leading zeros are never significant. So any zeros that appear in front of non-zero numbers are never going to be significant. So these three uh, zeros right here, they're not significant. They are placeholders, but they're not significant. So still just four sig figs there. Captive zeros are always significant. So a captive zero is a zero that is trapped between two non-zero numbers. So like here between the two and the three and there between the two and the three. So those are significant and then we count the rest. So that'd be five for both of those. All right, so trailing zeros um, are where it gets a little tricky. Trailing zeros means they're after all the non-zero numbers. So they're only significant if there's a decimal point in the number. So for example, in this first one, there's a decimal point right there present. So that means that these two zeros are significant. So you count them all up and that would be a total of six significant figures. Down here though, since there is no decimal shown in this number, then these two zeros back here are not significant. They are placeholders, which means they're important to tell us um, the relative value um, or scale of the number. But the only numbers that are significant in that measurement are the one, two, three, four. So basically, remember, sig fig is every number you know plus an estimate. So we know one, two, and three for certain, and then four is our um, guess there, our estimate. And then on that top number, though, since there's six sig figs, the first five, so 1.2340, we know for sure. And then we estimated that last zero. So it just shows us how, how um, accurate is our measurement. All right, now here's the trick. So I personally like the trick. Um, so basically think of a picture of the United States, and then you have the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean where they are supposed to be. 
So what you ask yourself is, is the um, decimal, is there a decimal present in the number? Is the decimal present or absent? So if it's present, you're going to go over here to the Pacific side. If it's absent, you're going to start on the Atlantic side of the number. Then you're going to travel towards the other ocean until you hit your first non-zero number. And then you start counting from that number over towards the other ocean. And that tells you how many sig figs you have. So for example, if I had this number, okay, so is there a decimal present? There is not, it's absent. So I'm gonna start over here on the Atlantic side. I'm gonna go to the first number that's not a zero. Okay, there it is, so there's my first number. So there's one, two, three, four sig figs in that number. So I would say there's four sig figs there, okay? Um, if you had, say, oh, I thought it was my smart board and I could circle it and it would disappear. Not so much luck. Okay, so um, for another example, say I had 1.23400, okay? So in this number, my decimal is present. I can see it, it's right there. So I start on the Pacific side over here. I go to the first number that's not a zero, which is my one, and I count towards the other ocean. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So that number has six significant figures. All right, now if I had a number like say um, 0 0.012304, okay, um, so I'm gonna look at this number. I see that there is a decimal present, so I'm gonna start on the Pacific side. I'm gonna go the first number that's not a zero. There it is, it's that one. So one, two, three, four, five. That's five sig figs in that number. Okay, now if I just added a zero on there, that automatically changes it from five to six sig figs. Okay, so it's all about the decimal here. The decimal can really alter um, how many sig figs you have. So let me quickly give you guys one more little example, and um, then we'll move on to some other stuff. All right, so if I had a number like, say, um, one, two, three, four, zero, zero, okay? So a while ago we discussed that this was um, a number that didn't have a decimal present, it's absent. So we're gonna be on the Atlantic side. We're gonna go the first number, not a zero, which is here. And we're gonna count to the other ocean. So one, two, three, four. So that is four sig figs in that number. Now watch, if I just do this, put a decimal behind it, that automatically changes it. Mama. So because there's a decimal behind it, Okay, hold on just a second. So because there's a decimal behind it, now it's present, so we're on the Pacific side. So now we're counting from the first non-zero number on this side, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So the, see that decimal automatically changed how many sig figs we had.